Okay, we'll take this. Eh, we'll take this. Come on. I hate going through these caves. <laughs> oh, they're just such a pain in the ass. They're not even like fun mazes. They're shitty mazes. Okay. Let's just get this set up again. Weevil is so super handy. Okay. She supposed it had grown up from the inside of the goat, for it stood over where she had buried it in the earth. Then said the mother to little one eye, climb up, my child, and break off some of the fruit from the tree. Uh no, I'm not gonna tangle with you. Okay. Da 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 return. Contains a haunch. Climb the ladder and head onwards. Um, I don't really know what's going on with these directions, but okay. I'll just return one screen and then... Whatever. I'm going this way. They're just locusts, so this shouldn't be too hard. Okay. One eye climbed up, but when she tried to catch a branch and pluck one of the apples, it escaped from her hand, and so it happened every time she made the attempt. And, do what she would, she could not reach one. Three eyes, said the mother. Climb up and try what you can do. Perhaps you will be able to see better with your three eyes than one eye can. One eye slid down from the tree, and three eyes climbed up. Take. Take. Save. Because I know I'm going to die if I keep reading and, you know, playing at the same time. Haunch? Haunch! Yay! I'm going in the right direction. Da da da. Take your first left. Wait, something about a ladder. Climb the ladder and head onwards. Okay. Ladder. Onwards. Cross the bridge. Right? And head east into the cave. Go and take your first left. Is this right? Or do they mean this left? I guess there's something up here. Oh yeah, a chest. Yay, chain whip. I like this cave. Like, at least this, like, floor background thing makes sense. Okay. Now we should be able to go up here, right? Da da da. Remember this area as Toad. Where do I need to go from here? Okay. One eye slid down from the tree and three eyes climbed up. But three eyes was not more skillful. With all her efforts, she could not draw the branches, nor the fruit, near enough to pluck even a leaf, for they sprang back as, they put up, as she put out her hand. At last, the mother was impatient and climbed up herself, but with no more success for it, as she appeared to grasp a branch of fruit, her hand closed upon thin air. May I try, said the little two eyes. Perhaps I may succeed. You indeed, cried her sisters. You with your two eyes, what can you do? But two eyes climbed up and the golden apples did not fly back from her when she touched them, but almost laid themselves on her hand, and she plucked them one after another till she carried down her own little apron full. Take. Okay, uh, now I need directions. <laughs> Cross the bridge and go east of the cave. Go to your first left, walk along the path, you'll see a chest, open it. And carry on until you see a cave. Uh. Well, there's a hundred pennies. I guess I'm going the right way. Okay, we'll just attack you as normal. Okay. Da -da -da. The mother took them from her and gave them to her sisters, as she said little two eyes did not handle them properly. But this was only from jealousy, because Little Two Eyes was the only one who could reach the fruit, and she went into the house feeling more spiteful to her than ever. It happened that while all three sisters were standing under the tree together, a young knight rode by. Run away, quick, and hide yourself, Little Two Eyes. Hide yourself somewhere, for we shall be quite ashamed for you to be seen. Then they pushed the poor girl in great haste under an empty cask which stood near the tree, and several of the golden apples that she had plucked along with her. Got a dark helmet. Is that... Is that good? I guess so. Take. <laughs> okay. 
explore this area and you'll find a toad in a blue chest. I'm guessing I need to find this toad? Uh... How am I supposed to explore this area? Ugh. As the knight came nearer, they saw he was a handsome man, and presently he halted, and took with er, and looked with wonder and pleasure at the beautiful tree with its silver leaves and golden fruit. At last he spoke to the sisters and asked, To whom does this beautiful tree belong? If a man possessed only one branch, he might obtain all he wished for in the world. Take. So, is this frog? Or toad, or whatever it is I'm supposed to run this area by? Ugh. This tree belongs to us, said the two sisters, and we'll break off a branch for you if you like. They gave themselves a great deal of trouble in trying to do so as they offered, but all to no purpose, for the branches and the fruit evaded their efforts, and sprung back at every touch. This is wonderful, exclaimed the knight, that the tree should belong to you, and yet you are not able to gather even a branch. They persisted, however, in declaring that the tree was their own property. At this moment, Little Two Eyes, who was angry because her sisters had not told the truth, caused two of the golden apples to slip out from under the cask, and they rolled on till they reached the feet of the knight's horse. When he saw them, he asked in astonishment where they came from. The two ugly maidens replied that they had another sister, but they dared not let him see her, for she had only two eyes, like common people, and was named Little Two Eyes. But the knight felt very anxious to see her and called out, Little Two Eyes, come here. Then came Two Eyes, quite comforted from the empty cask, and the knight was astonished to find her so beautiful. Then he said, Little Two Eyes, can you break off a branch of the tree for me? There we go. Yep, still reading this story. <laughs> Seriously, how am I supposed to know where I'm supposed to go? Okay, there's a frog or toad or whatever. Go away, this is my cave. Whatever, toad. And a blue chest. Because you'll need to come back here later. Return by two screens. Oh, great. What about that blue chest? Is there anything in that blue chest? I'm gonna find that thing and then, like... Oh, there's the blue chest. Da -da. Let's just walk over here. Can I open the thing? Or do I still lack the magic to open blue chests? Yep. Let's dodge out of here real quick. And then leave by two screens. This doesn't help me at all. This guide is wasting more time than... Well, this guide is wasting slightly less time than me trying to figure out the directions on my own. Slightly. Let's just go back one. And how the hell did I get over here? Then he said, Little Two Eyes, can you break off a branch of the tree for me? Oh yes, she replied. I can, very easily, for the tree belongs to me. And she climbed up and, without any trouble, broke off a branch with its silver leaves and golden fruit and gave it to the knight. He looked down at her as she stood by his horse and said, Little Two Eyes, what shall I give you for this? Ah, she answered, I, hu I suffer from hunger and thirst and sorrow and trouble from early morning to late at night. If you would only take me with you and release me, I should be so happy. Well, one more screen. Ah, oh, damn it. Then the knight lifted the little maiden on his horse and rode home with her to his father's castle. There she was given beautiful clothes to wear and as much to eat and drink as she wished. And as she grew up, the young knight loved her so dearly that they were married with great rejoicings. Now when the two sisters also saw little two eyes carried away by the handsome young knight, they were overjoyed at their good fortune. The wonderful tree belongs to us now, they said. Even if we cannot break off a branch, yet everybody who passes will stop to admire it and make acquaintance with us, and who knows? We may get husbands after all. Because, you know, that, that's the kind of goals you should have. But when they rose the next morning, lo, the tree had vanished, and with it all their hopes. And on this very morning, when Little Two Eyes looked out of her chamber window of the castle, she saw, to her great joy, that the tree had followed her. So I'm already way over, you know, my one-off time, or the time that I was shooting for, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this story, because I don't know how I feel about, you know, reading stories all over the battles and all that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the rest of this, and I'm going to let you all decide whether you want me to keep reading stories 
over uh, JRPG battles. Because I find them boring to watch. I don't know if you guys find them boring to watch. But I typically don't speak over them normally. But if you want me to keep reading stories, you go ahead and let me know. Um, either way, I, I could do with or without the stories over the battles. But you gotta let me know. Anyways, um, this has been fun-ish. <laughs> I might just make my way through this uh, cave before I come back to you. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. It's I'm not I'm not happy with this game. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episodes. Bye! Love you! Little Two Eyes lived for a long time in great happiness, but she heard nothing of her sisters till one day two poor women came to the castle to beg for alms. Little Two Eyes saw them, and, looking earnestly in their faces, she recognized her two sisters who had become so poor that they were obliged to beg their bread from door to door. But the good sister received them most kindly and promised to take care of them and give them all they wanted. And then they did indeed repent and feel sorry for having treated her so badly in their youthful days. The end.